welcome back! It's been over a month since we've made a video. We are so sorry, but our life has been jam-packed full of crazy goodness and awesome <laughs> crazy things. First, we have a new Pope. Woo! Habeos Papa! Pope Francis. So beautiful, so inspiring. I'm really excited. Just the way that he started his papacy with the people praying over him, which is, I was so moved. The 83-year-old nun sitting next to me was moved. And it's just, it's Everyone an exciting in the time in, in the church. And um, so some things that we've been doing this month where we went to Kansas and back. And we we've didn't get swept away in a tornado. But we saw Oz. The we movie, did. The movie. Highly approved. We went to Benedictine College and prayed with some monks. Crazy mm -hmm. good. And did some vocation stuff. We hung out with SPO, St. Paul's Outreach. Hey. Amazing. We met Ike and Dolo. If you don't know his music, go, go look, look, look him up right now. <laughs> Um, and then finally, during all that time, one of our candidates came to visit us. So we were this time of vocation a witness as she lived with us during for about a month. So it was really beautiful. And then finally, we were on silent retreat during Holy Week, one of the most graced times in the church. Really beautiful. So I know I have my favorite times of Holy Week, but Chelsea, like real quick, like what was your favorite moment of Holy Week this year? I think it's always been kind of one of my favorites, but even more so this year um, was Holy Saturday, just kind of waiting at the tomb after an intense Good Friday. That was definitely my favorite part. Yeah, that like moment of silence, like building up to the Easter Vigil. Yes. And for me, always has been the Easter Vigil. I mean, how could you not? It's like the best liturgy all year, and you just wait for it, and you're like, don't cut any corners, and you pray that your parish is like going to do the whole crazy thing. But my favorite part of the of the vigil, and Chelsea knows this, is the Easter fire. Like, I get so excited because I'm like, Chelsea, Chelsea, I'm sorry, Chelsea. Just, they're going to bless the fire. And, like, it's true. It's the one time really of year good. that our church blesses fire and that's so cool but on top of that the fire blesses the candle the easter candle and the easter candle is dipped into the holy water at the baptismal font and the water then blesses the people as the people in our ca were getting baptized and then we're all baptized and we're all renewed and then that all started from fire and that represents the holy spirit in the church and all this like everyone's like it's a big precursor to the wedding feast i don't know i'm really excited she likes fire <laughs> i like fire and baptism and it's just so full of grace. We're going to answer a few questions that y'all had. You guys had a couple of good ones from the last month. So we're going to go through a few. Mm -hmm. Here it goes. Anonymous asked us, do you have any advice for girls who have been accepted and are waiting to enter as postulants? Yes, we do have advice. Yeah. <laughs> Our advice would be to definitely persevere and pray a lot. Um... I wouldn't be surprised, like, don't be surprised if the devil tries to um, throw some opposition in your way and just really try to drag you down because this is, like, his fighting chance. Um, so definitely pray and persevere through that. Mm -hmm. And I think just know that, you know, Christ is present within you mm -hmm. and clinging to that peace that he's already given you. And so definitely perseverance in prayer. Yes, for mm -hmm. sure. Speaking of girls who have been accepted and are waiting to enter, we actually have two for our community, Julie and Danielle, and um, we're really excited. They're hoping to enter this fall, but the only thing prohibiting them right now is student debt. So just shout out to the Labore Society, some, an organization that they're both involved in that are dedicated to helping paying off debt um, for women or men hoping to enter a religious community and can't um, because of college debt. So it's they allow them to help them fundraise and raise money. So definitely check them out. Yeah, so if you're beautiful, feeling particularly generous, go for it. So last question is from our Rathbun23, and their question was, his or her, what is your favorite spiritual reading book? And for me, I am always really excited every time Christopher West has a new book out. His new one, Heart of the Gospel, and uh, the one on Desire is really beautiful. And then also my go-to book on every retreat, I try to bring with me um, St. John of the Cross, um, the writings and poetry and collected works of St. John of the Cross, because his poetry can speak to so many different parts of your spiritual life that I find it really helpful and beautiful. So Kavanaugh's commentary on it, too, is really good. 
Mine, I feel kind of cliche, but my two favorite go-to books for spiritual reading are St. Faustina's Diary. St. Faustina is actually my confirmation saint, so love her, love her diary. It's beautiful. And then second is Story of a Soul, St. Therese. Um, that's my go-to book just because of her simplicity and mm -hmm. just her burning love for Jesus um, is just always really inspiring to me. So that's something I go back to over and over. Mm -hmm. So Classic, not cliche. <laughs> awesome. So the last five episodes that we've made, y'all have asked a lot of questions about prayer. So in case you were wondering... We don't pray next to the bookshelf. No, this is not where we live. This is not the only part of our convent. We actually, we have a chapel and it's upstairs in our book center. And since we didn't have any funny questions to share with you, we thought that we would show you part of our convent. We're going to show you the chapel where we pray and where the sisters pray. And we have mass there a couple times a week. So um, we're going to show you. Ready? So we are down in our book center, Pauline Books and Media, and we're going to make our way into chapel. And it's really awesome because all of our bookstores throughout the world have a chapel that's open to anyone who comes in the bookstore. And it's the same one that the sisters use. So let's go check it out. So Jesus is always kept here in the Blessed Sacrament, and it's really beautiful because people who may not come in a church may find their way in our chapel, which is really awesome when it happens. So you'll notice we have St. Paul the Apostle on the wall, which is our father, and part of our spirituality is um, devoted to the gospel, so we always keep an open gospel book. So Jesus present in the Eucharist and in the Word. So you can't see them now because they're not here, but in the morning this chapel is filled with sisters and praying and adoring the Blessed Sacrament and praying for all of you. So we're really happy to, to share a little bit of our chapel and a little insight into our charism with you. This is not, this is false. False fire. You're this is not blessed. <laughs>